consider for a moment this brick. It weighs about five pounds, roughly 2.5 kilograms. You could buy it at Home Depot for a couple of dollars. But in outer space, this brick is worth $50,000. That's because it costs $20,000 per kilogram to get stuff into outer space. At that rate, my house would be worth as much as the Burj Khalifa. If we're to truly colonize a solar system, we're gonna have to put a lot of stuff up in outer space, and right now our methods for doing so are just too expensive to be feasible. There is one idea that would make going into outer space as simple as going to the top floor of a building. It's a space elevator, and it could possibly transform the entire future of humanity. Austin Morris asked, you should do a video on the science and implications of a space elevator. Just this last week, Iron Man Elon Musk landed his Falcon 9 rocket on an autonomous barge out in the middle of the ocean, once again displaying his complete and total omnipotent mastery over space and time. This was a monumental feat that was many failures in the making, but really it was only the last in a very long string of events and ideas that were trying to reduce the price of getting into outer space. To escape Earth's gravity, you have to travel at 11.2 kilometers per second, which equals about 25,000 miles per hour, and that requires a lot of thrust. That kind of thrust requires a lot of fuel, and all that fuel adds more weight, which requires more thrust, which needs more fuel, which adds more weight. The Saturn V rocket, for example, had to take Apollo astronauts all the way to the moon. This monstrosity was 363 feet tall. It dwarfed the Statue of Liberty. And the part of it that actually came back to Earth was this right here. All the rest of it was that rockets and thrust and fuel that I was talking about. And it all fell away back to the Earth, making a nice little haven for crabs at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean as we speak. In fact, there wasn't a stitch on this spacecraft that was actually reusable. It just goes to show how serious we were about getting to the moon. Wait, did I say getting to the moon? <laughs> I meant beating the Russians. The space shuttle tried to solve for this problem, but it still cost millions of dollars per launch, and after a couple of terrible disasters, NASA lost confidence in the vehicle and grounded it. So along comes SpaceX, and they've done a lot of really great things to reduce the price of getting stuff into outer space, taking it down to around two to three thousand dollars per pound, but even Elon Musk says that that's not enough. We need to get it down to around $100 per pound. Only then would we be able to build the kind of massive structures required for long-term space travel around the solar system. Until we get to that point, we're just never gonna reach the next level of human expansion. And this is probably the point where a lot of you are starting to say, okay, are we ever gonna talk about the space elevator? And yes, I am, but I wanted to put all that out there first because the fact of the matter is, building a space elevator would be the single most massive construction project in the history of humanity. And I wanted to first show you why it's so important to do. So, how do you build an elevator that goes all the way up into space? Well, it basically has four parts. The base of the Earth, a counterbalance, a shuttle to go up and down the elevator, and the most tricky part of all, a 25,000 mile cable. The counterbalance would basically orbit the Earth in a geostationary orbit, actually just past geostationary orbit. And the placement is really critical because if it's too low, it wouldn't have the inertia to stay up above the Earth's gravity. And if it was too high, it would put too much strain on the tether and fly away. And that tether is a problem. Every other part of this equation is available with current technologies except for the tether. We haven't quite gotten there on that one yet. There's just not a material that's strong enough but light enough to be able to bear that kind of load without being too heavy itself. Most people point to nanotubes as the answer. Nanotubes are these tiny tube-like structures made by manipulating carbon atoms, which gives it strength on the atomic scale. It's really one of the most incredible materials we've ever created when it comes to strength versus density. But there's one problem with carbon nanotubes. The longest one we've ever created is about that long. This material is literally made atom by atom. It takes a really long time to make, and we're talking about making the longest cable anybody has ever made in the history of humanity out of it. By the way, the current longest cable in the world is called the Si We Me, which goes all the way from Japan through around Africa to Europe. It's a telecommunications fiber optic cable that literally connects two thirds of the world. How cool is that? But this cable would have to endure way more stress than any other cable we've ever produced in the history of man. And not only just from the pull of the centripetal force, but it would also be prone to massive wobbling. Everything from atmospheric storms to tremors, even gravitational waves could set it off. Not to mention damage from the, you know, millions of pieces of space debris that are flying around the earth at 20,000 miles per hour and micrometeorites that normally would burn up in the atmosphere and cosmic rays and the list goes on and on. And it would be a potential target for terrorist groups. It would have to be continuously protected 24 seven. And if it ever did fall, it would create a debris field that would literally wrap around the earth. It would be bad. These are significant problems that we've yet to overcome, but there is another option if we wanna build a space elevator that's a lot more feasible, even with our current technology. A space elevator on the moon. Because of the moon's lower gravity and tidal locking with Earth, the space elevator would be a lot more stable, be a lot less pressure on that cable, and there wouldn't be as much, you know, space junk flying around. And 
as it turns out, not a whole lot of terrorists on the moon. But why would you want to build a space elevator on the moon? Future moon colonies could mine the moon for materials and build the kind of big, massive interplanetary ships that just wouldn't be possible under Earth's gravity. NASA's been talking about going back to the moon for a while, and they may be using their next uh, spacecraft, the Orion, in the launch system that goes along with it on expeditions that go out there and scope out possible locations for colonies. So that might be an option. There are a couple of projects in the works actually. Japan's working on a space elevator concept that they hope to get into production around 2035. And there's a company in Canada called Thoth that has the idea of an inflatable space elevator that would go up 20 kilometers. From there, space planes and rockets could take off and land, so it would basically serve as the first stage of a rocket launch. It's the space version of, let me give you a little boost. So for a while anyway, much like my old iPhone, this is just gonna be one really expensive brick. Now, I don't know if I personally would wanna ride up on a space elevator, but you tell me, would you wanna do it? Do you think it's something we should do? What do you think of the moon option? Do you think that Elevator Man just doesn't have the same ring as Rocket Man? Discuss. Thank you guys for watching. I'll put some links in the description below to some books that are on related subjects. If you're looking for some new reading material, you can check that out. And yeah, follow me. I'm at Answers with Joe on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I'm starting to figure out Snapchat. Um, I, I'm starting to put like extra thoughts, maybe things that didn't make it into the video. I'll do little snaps on that. So if you want to get a bigger picture of what's going on, you can follow me there. So click like if you liked. And if you're new here, I hope I earned to subscribe because I come back with stuff like this every Monday. And if you don't subscribe, that's fine. Just keep an eye out for any thumbnails with this this blue color on it you never know where I might pop up all right thanks a lot for watching you guys go out and have a great eye-opening week and I will see you next time love you guys take care